everyone, this is Teacher Jane of Teach Talk, where learning is fun and easy. If this is your first time watching our videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button so you'll get notified on our next videos. Welcome to Shensha Amazing! Kung saan pag-uusapan natin ang mga science concepts from grade 7 to grade 12, kasamang topics in general science, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science. At dito, Bida Ngagham! These are dogs. These are carabaos. In the ocean, we can see a school of fish. And these people are among us. Sila ay mga tao rin o mga humans. Those are just some organisms who belong to distinct and separate species in our world. In this Shensha Amazing episode, pag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa species. How do we define species? A species is defined as all populations of organisms that are potentially capable of interbreeding but usually are reproductively isolated from members of other species. In this definition, we have two keywords or key phrases. Una, ang word na interbreeding. Ikalawa, ay ang word na reproductively isolated. What do we mean when we say Interbreeding. It means that members of the same species are capable of mating and producing an offspring. For example, two dogs are able to produce a puppy. The other key phrase, reproductively isolated, means that a member of a certain species cannot produce a healthy and fertile offspring. Halimbawa, hindi pwede makaproduce ng isang organism ang isang dog at ang isang cat. And when certain species, just like these pigs, live in a certain area or occupy the same place at a given time, they are now called a population. A population consists of all organisms belonging to the same species occupying a particular area at a given time. Another example would be a population of crocodiles occupying a nearby swamp. But how many species are there in the world? Scientists have discovered about 2 million species of plants, animals, and microorganisms. They have been named and documented worldwide. However, they also believe that there are about 5 to 100 million species of living things on Earth. Conservative estimates place the number at around 12.5 million species in all. You can just imagine the immense diversity in structure, function, behavior, and chemistry exhibited by these many different forms of life. The classification of organisms is all thanks to taxonomists. They are biologists who specialize in classifying living things. They group and name organisms depending on certain characteristics. An example of a famous taxonomist is Sir Carolus Linnaeus. He is called the father of taxonomy. Let's have another trivia. Have you seen a horse before? We commonly see horses in movies. For everyone's information, a horse has 64 chromosomes in each cell. Isang kamag-anak ng horse ay ang donkey. A donkey has 62 chromosomes in each cell. Horses and donkeys belong to different species. The most obvious evidence in their difference is the total chromosome number. Pero bakit sila magkamuka? The similarities in appearance stems from the reason that they evolved from the same family, called the equidae. The species Equidae belong to a subfamily of animals called Equus. But even if horses and donkeys belong to different species, they were able to produce an offspring, which is called a mule. 
a mule is an offspring that resulted from a male donkey and a female horse. Mules combine the characteristics of horse and donkey parents to create a tougher and more resilient working animal. Even though mules are tougher than horses and more intelligent than donkeys, mules are actually 99.9% .9 sterile. Ano ang ibig sabihin ng sterile? Sterile means that an organism is incapable of reproduction o hindi niya kaya makapagproduce ng isa pang offspring. What makes them sterile? Earlier, we have learned that horses have 64 chromosomes and during meiosis, half of this, which is 32, is passed into its offspring. On the other hand, donkeys have 62 chromosomes in each cell and half of this, which is 31, is passed on to its offspring. If the sperm cell of the horse and the egg cell of a donkey unite and form a zygote, they will be able to produce a mule, which has 63 chromosomes. Now, during meiosis, an uneven chromosome count will happen because the half of 63 does not equate to a complete set of chromosomes. That's why mules are said to be sterile. Although in rare cases, female mules have been known to give birth. But remember that this case is very rare. If you want to see a mule, you may want to visit China because China breeds the largest numbers of mules in the world. It breeds more than 7 million mules each year where they are commonly used on small farms and for transport. Kanina, inalam natin kung ilan ang species sa mundo. Ngayon, we are going to try and answer the question, why are there so many different species or how did the diversity of species happen? Why are there so many species? To answer this question, we need to go back to the five most important milestones in our geologic time. These periods include very significant events which led to the diversity of species today. Earth is estimated to be about 4.5 to 5 billion years old. For more than a billion years, there was not a single living thing around. And scientists say that this is how the primitive Earth looked like. So how did species emerge? Let's start with some fossil records. Fossil records show that life may have begun some 3.8 billion years ago in the form of primitive one-celled organisms. What were these primitive cells like? Kagaya sila ng mga heterotrophic, anaerobic, and asexually reproducing prokaryotes that exist today. As their populations grew and food resources became scarce, they have changed and developed into more complex forms, which led us to another major development. 2.8 billion years ago, some of those primitive prokaryotes developed the ability to manufacture pigments that can harness light energy from the sun. If you can remember, ano nga ang tawag sa process in which organisms harness energy or use energy from the sun? It is photosynthesis. As photosynthetic microorganisms, they produce their organic food and release oxygen in the air. The primitive prokaryotic cells may have lived together to reduce the pressures of competition for food and nutrients from the environment. This paved the way for multicellularity o ang pagkabuo ng multicellular organisms just like multicellular animals and plants. And finally, 400 million years ago, the first multicellular land plants appeared. This was followed by the emergence of arthropods and terrestrial organisms. During those periods, the diversity of species increased. But nasaan ang mga tao? How did we start? 200,000 years ago, scientists said 
that 200,000 years ago, the human species, our species, Homo sapiens, originated from Africa. All members of Homo sapiens have slender body build compared sa earlier members ng genus na Homo. They have a chin and a large brain that is highly developed. Because of our highly developed brain, we have allowed the evolution of behavioral modernity and for the continuous social and technological innovations that allowed us to survive in almost all habitats. Before we end this short Shensh Amazing episode, let's have a quick recap of what we have discussed. In this video, we talked about species. Specifically, we covered topics on the definition of species, taxonomy, some trivia about mules, and lastly, we found out the general reason as to how diverse species came about. That ends our Shensh Amazing episode for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video to your friends so that we can learn together. Bye!